What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Minnesota Twins franchise here on MLB The Show 18. Today we have an episode I've been very excited for as we go through the Home Run Derby and the All-Star Game. The moves we made during the offseason ensured that we'd have a lot more fun over the All-Star break this time around. We had Dallas Keuchel be one of the top vote-getters at starting pitcher. Paul Goldschmidt had more votes than anybody. Charlie Blackman is an All-Star, and even Rysel Iglesias. But we're going to lead off with the Home Run Derby. Representing the Twins, both Paul Goldschmidt and Nelson Cruz were one of the best home run hitting teams in the majors, and we had two chances to win the Derby. I like this new Home Run Derby format. It's a head-to-head -head matchup, four minutes each, whoever hits the most home runs moves on. And the first round featured this matchup between Freddie Freeman and Mike Trout. Here's Freeman's very first swing, launching this into the lights. We can't even see it. Freeman got off to a very hot start. These were some moonshots off of Freeman, no doubt about these swings. So I knew this was not going to be an easy ride, as that leaves the stadium entirely. I didn't even know you could do that. Freddie Freeman ends up giving Mike Trout a really hard bar to clear. This was a rock solid first round for Freddie Freeman. He ends up hitting 14 home runs. But his competition was the major league leader in home runs, Mike Trout, who entered with 30 and the best at bat per home run rate in the majors. Every 11.2 at bats, Mike Trout goes yard. Headed to the sculpture here, he drills it at 422 feet. He didn't start out as well as Freddie Freeman, who was really consistent, but Trout looked to make a comeback here in the second half of this round. He had seven here with a minute and a half to go, putting him well behind the pace he needed. Two home runs of over 440 feet would give you an extra 30 seconds, but Trout really wasn't sending them the way Freeman was. He ended up with 11 home runs, which is all right, but it wouldn't beat Freeman. The eight seed beats the one seed right away. Next up, we get two first basemen, Joey Votto versus Paul Goldschmidt. Votto goes first to show us what we got to beat with Goldie. And Votto wastes no time with a big swing to right center. That one into the second deck at 423 feet. Next swing, that one's hit a ton to deep right field. Up toward the rooftop, that one hits the foul pole or something out there at 398. Then he shows he has the opposite field power as well. He doesn't let those pitches pass. He'll swing at anything. This pitch is up and away. Votto gives the left field bleachers another home run. Overall, I was worried about both Freeman and Votto in this tournament, and Joey Votto ends up smashing that at 460 to close out his round with 14 home runs, the same amount that Freeman put together. So here's Paul Goldschmidt. We've watched him hit 27 home runs so far this season. He's been incredible, but his start doesn't go as planned as he hooks a couple of these foul. He ends up getting this to go, for his second home run toward the windows. But to keep up with Joey Votto, you had to get three and a half home runs per minute. And we were behind that pace at the halfway point. Trying to find a rhythm, we go 445 to left field. This down the line, another close call that's ultimately foul. There's not much you can waste with a round as good as Votto had. And that's the third one that misses. A line drive swing now from Goldie, nope. It didn't look good. We had to get the perfect finish to advance. There's number 12. We go to bonus time, but it's not enough. Joey Votto knocks out Paul Goldschmidt here in round number one. But of course, we still had Nelson Cruz in the tournament. Now in the opposite bracket, we had Kyle Seeger versus Eric Thames. It definitely seemed like the left-handed hitters had a better time going yard. We saw Freeman and Votto hit 14. Trout had 11. Goldie only 12. Seeger wasn't quite as good as Freeman or Votto, but did finish pretty strong in his final minute. He ends up clobbering 12 home runs in his round, setting the bar for three seed Eric Thames. Another lefty, and Thames showed the power that we saw from Freeman and Votto. He sent these way out, 444 feet. 
Another one turned on to deep right center. Eric Thames up to nine with over a minute to go. And he had plenty of time to spare. A pretty easy victory all around for Eric Thames. I wonder where this round could have been if he had the extra minute there because he had the bonus time unlocked. He just didn't need to use it. He gets 13 home runs, and that opens up our last singles matchup of the first round. Nelson Cruz versus Bryce Harper. Now, I didn't want to see both our players go down in the first round. Cruz deep left center to the warning track. Another one headed out there. Maybe this home run derby is not going to be friendly to the righties. Eventually, Cruz does correct it and smashes this 383 feet. And then the next pitch headed out to the batter's eye in center field. This one, a whopping 451 feet. We finally found the rhythm here with Cruz, and there was no stopping him at that point. 467 to the windows. Another one to left center. Hits something out there. It goes over 460. Cruz had some pretty good streaks in this round. 12 with bonus time still to come. That one way out 462. Cruz ends up with 14 home runs in the first round, tied for the most with Joey Votto and Freddie Freeman. But he did have Bryce Harper, the two seed, as his competition. So here we go with Bryce Harper. Just under 200 career home runs. 29 home runs during the first half of the season. A home run rate very close to Mike Trout. He wastes no time. Way up. About as far back as you can go in the second deck. Harper ends up with a decent start, but then he starts hooking some foul and he gets underneath a few too much. So I felt pretty good. In the first half, he needed seven to keep pace. He ended up with only four. He gets to eight with under a minute to go and continues hitting these long fly balls that take forever to come down, wasting precious time. Harper gets a respectable 12 home runs, but he gets knocked out by Nelson Cruz. And that concludes a very competitive first round. Nobody had less than 11 or more than 14. That was a very close spread. So on to the semifinals. I was really happy at least that Freeman and Votto had to play against each other because they had two of the scariest first rounds. I wanted to see them just battle it out, but it wasn't a repeat at all. Freeman got off to a really slow start, only four home runs at the halfway point. He hits the sculpture, showing some opposite field power, and does have a better second half to his round, but I expected something like the first round that we saw. Freeman ends up with 10 home runs, the least in a round so far. So Joey Votto, I thought this would be pretty easy for Joey to beat, but like Freeman, he didn't start out well. Like three or four of his first swings were not even competitive. But then he picks up the pace much like Freddie Freeman did after the first minute passes. There's home run number three with two and a half to go. Fly ball. That's not going to do it. Votto setting him behind the pace that he needs. But in the last minute and a half, he storms back. Home run number seven at 456. Looking to tie it now. A line drive left center. That is out. He ties it. Now trying to avoid bonus time. Clobbered to deep right. That ball gives Joey Votto a spot in the championship round. But would he face Nelson Cruz or Eric Thames? Cruz up first after 14 homers in the first round. And here's Nelson Cruz down the line. That one did go around the foul pole. We get some good luck this time around. Another one way out. Cruz again got very streaky. He had streaks of four home runs in a row. We saw him hit five home runs in a row. At 14 home runs already, he sends out number 15. That's a new tournament high as Eric Thames had his work cut out for him and he got off to a pretty bad start. We see ground balls, a swing and a miss. It was nothing close to what he did in the first round. Thames had five home runs in the semifinals. So on to the last round. Nelson Cruz off to a strong start. The sculpture might need some repairing after this is over. Cruz launches another one. So many of these were absolutely crushed. 
450 plus was nothing for Nelson Cruz. 392 that time, and then one headed out toward the windows again. 424. He had, I think, a seven home run streak in this round. He doesn't hit the scoreboard here. He goes over it. 12 home runs already for Nelson Cruz, and then another one, number 13. Cruz had his best round in the finals. There's number 16 and number 17 for good measure. Good luck, Joey Votto. Cruz got better every single round and finished with 46 home runs. Votto needed more than four home runs per minute to pull this off. And you can't do it by missing the baseball. Then he gets underneath one. That doesn't have the carry. That'd be a fly out. Votto took a little bit to get his first home run, and it would take a long streak for him to make up for lost time. That goes out at 370. But it just seemed like Joey Votto didn't have it in the tank anymore. The second half of his round did improve, but there was no catching Nelson Cruz. He is this year's home run derby champion. I was ecstatic to see two twins in this tournament. I thought Goldschmidt had a better chance to win it, but he had too many fouls. Whereas Nelson Cruz, we just got into such a good rhythm here in the derby. And this was a lot of fun. Let's continue to the All-Star game now. I did play the entire thing this time. I don't think I have in the past. But we had four All-Stars, which maybe is a little bit lower than you'd like to see, but it's pretty tough to make it. Josh Harrison was close. I think Mitch Garver would have had a chance if he started the entire season. And I made sure that every single player, every pitcher, every position player got a chance to play. Here we are in the first inning. It's Clayton Kershaw versus Mike Trout. Let's just say I'm very happy that Kershaw is not in the American League. We had Chris Sale make the start in this game, and coming off his first round defeat in the home run derby, it is a grounder for Bryce Harper. He gets retired. Let's head to the second. Paul Goldschmidt trying to make up for a first round exit. Goldie here facing Kershaw. This ball smashed to right and caught on a line. We put in Corey Kluber in the second inning, and the first hit of the game is a single for Justin Turner. Not sure what the issue was here with Michael Brantley as he just misses the ball, and that allows Turner to move into scoring position. Next batter, Yasiel Puig past first base. That got past Goldie, actually, and that brings home the first run of the game. I wondered if this would be a low-scoring game or how it would play out. Here's a fly ball from the ex-twin, Brian Dozier, who's now a Dodger, and that is caught by current twin, Charlie Blackman. Puig moves up to third base, and a busted bat toward Goldschmidt. Watch out. He records the out, but the NL get their second run across. They then throw in the flame-throwing Steven Strasburg in the third inning as Charlie Blackman makes his first at-bat. First pitch, drilled the other way past third base. Blackman has one of the top averages in all of baseball. He's had a phenomenal season as our leadoff hitter. And the next batter is Kyle Seager. That will tie the game as Seager continues his home run derby performance. 429 feet. The American League wasn't finished, however, with a runner on base. Here's Trout with a jam shot to right. It does fall in. Two aboard now for the American League with two away. Paul Goldschmidt trying to come through like he has all season. On the ground to the right side, however, a routine play ends the inning. Top of the fourth. Now it's Carlos Correa at bat. The Houston Astro heads out the deep center field. That one has a chance, but it's caught on the warning track. Blackman gets another at bat in the fourth inning. This on the ground, up the middle. Good play, and the throw gets him out in time. Still tied at two as we enter Dallas Keuchel into the game. He went 11-4 and four in the first half of the season. I'd love to see him have a chance to win a Cy Young, maybe get 20 victories. Good play here at second base by Jose Altuve. And then an 0-2 jammed pop-up for Salvador Perez out number two. And Yasiel Puig. Keuchel gets two strikes, then Puig with a line drive past first base. 
His second hit going the other way. One on now with two away. And it's Brian Dozier grounding to third base to end the inning. We'll take it into the fifth inning now. A full count to Kyle Seeger who comes through with another hit. That time a nice looking single into left center. To follow, Salvador Perez gets underneath one. Driven out to left center with Carey. That ball is out of here for a two-run home run. 4-2 American League thanks to a pair of two-run shots. Paul Goldschmidt gets another at-bat in the sixth. This ball scorched out to deep right field but is ultimately caught. New hitters enter the game as Gene Segura makes a left field exit. That ball clobbered. I guess the home run derby never really ended. 424 feet, AL takes a 5-2 lead. Blackman stays in the game and I wanted one more at bat, but instead he gets drilled by Michael Waka. Bottom of the sixth inning, Bryce Harper still in. We have Jeremy Jeffress on the mound. He's the kind of player I think this team could use. A dominant bullpen arm who can get the strikeouts when necessary. After striking out Harper, we head to the eighth. In comes Jose Abreu for Paul Goldschmidt. And Abreu trying to stretch this into a double. The throw is on point, but Abreu is there. And that's when Nelson Cruz enters. Putting aside his home run derby title for the moment as he launches another one out to deep center. This ball will not leave. But Abreu does tag from second to third base. Looking for one more run. Segura again with the pop up here in the infield. National League keep it to a 5-2 game. As the AL tries to hang on, Rysel Iglesias enters. 18 saves in the first half. Overall, a pretty good season thus far. Here's a fly ball hit out to left field lazily. Plenty of time to settle underneath. And the catch is made. Top nine, Blackman stays in, gets one more shot. And that's a line drive into center field. Two hits for Charlie Blackman here in the All-Star game. Let's go bottom nine, trying to end it. Not so fast. Off of Craig Kimbrell, this is a home run for Yanervis Salarte, making it a 5-3 game. To end the game, we turn to closer Zach Britton, and he gets the pop-up with two away. This game is over as the American League is victorious. We had Nelson Cruz win the home run derby. We had four twins contribute to a victory in the All-Star game. It's another win for the Twins, essentially. Fun episode here over the All-Star break. Let's do this again sometime. The only downside here was that Paul Goldschmidt didn't get a hit in the All-Star game and didn't make it past the first round of the Home Run Derby. But overall, very fun. And now we look ahead to our next step, which is to prepare for the trade deadline. We're currently three games ahead of Cleveland, and we are expected to make a postseason run of some kind. So we have a choice. Do we stay with our roster that got us to this point, or do we try and make a move or two to try and strengthen our team for the postseason run? We know that other teams will make trades, so do we need to do the same? We could go acquire a relief pitcher, maybe a starter. If we had to fill one of those spots internally, starting pitcher would be easier and probably less expensive in a trade. We'll talk about it more next episode. We'll go through a game maybe against the Reds next time with Maxwell Fowler. And I will see you all then. Thank you all for watching. Please leave your feedback down below in the comment section. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.